Oh, hello. Um, we are, I think we're about to start right on time. Okay, sorry, uh, I'm uh, Dr. Victor Hui. I'm from Island Hospital. I'm the uh, ENT surgeon. Uh, I guess uh, I'm supposed to be part of uh, a series of lectures um, organized by our very uh, enthusiastic and uh, motivated uh, marketing team. Um, I won't call this a public talk, but say basically a sharing session. So um, I think we're going to go on to the next slide. I'm given a task to talk to you, obviously, of something related to ENT. So ENT health, things you should know. So I'm um, sorry a bit, I look a bit disheveled. I'm just out of OT and as usual, uh, right on time. Uh, patients have to be waiting for a short while. Well, uh, probably will go through half an hour. I'm not too sure whether there are many of you. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. So not many of you, I guess, uh, some of my patients say they might tune in, those who found out from Facebook. So anyway, um, before we jump into what uh, the common things we uh, do as an ENT surgeon. Uh, we, um, on and off, I've been doing this, I've been here for almost 10 years now in Island Hospital. And uh, now and then we still have patients who ask questions like, oh, doctor, I didn't know that you would treat this disease. Oh, now I know. Uh, what do you guys do? I thought you just look into people's nose or people's ears. Uh, I guess we are quite a confusing uh, group of doctors, you know. Um, I'm going to just tell you one more confusing uh, term here. It's called otorhinolaryngologist. So if you Google this up, uh, basically it's just a fancy full name, all right, a twist, uh, a tongue twister, but it stands for ENT, head and neck surgeon. So this is my favorite cartoon of all time over here. All right, so if I am a ENT doctor for the animals, uh, possibly, uh, you know, my most popular client would be obviously the giraffe or the, uh, uh, what's that again, the uh, elephant and also uh, the rabbit. Uh, would you say so? All right, so uh, let's go on. Okay, so just to let you know a bit of uh, what we do, my area of expertise comprises from just below the brain so it starts with what we call the base of skull here. I think uh, you can see the cursor, right? Okay, so that's the frontal sinus all the way from here and down to before your shoulder starts, okay? The end of the neck over here. As you can see, maybe what distinguishes us uh, from maybe my other colleagues, uh, other uh, consultants in other fields. So as usual, when you come and see us, we will start with clinical history. We'll be looking at we're asking you a bunch of questions and then followed by clinical examination. So this is where we are, might be a bit different, okay? So uh, other doctors will just examine you, you know, up and down all the way to the particular part of your body that needs to be examined. Uh, what we do is that we examine you, not just on the outside, but we kind of also examine you through a scope into the inside of your body, okay? So, um, and how do we do that? Okay, let me go back to this and, oops. Yes, that's what we do, okay? So here, um, we do something called a nasal endoscopy, all right? So what we do is that we have all different types of scopes here and then you can examine, all right, all the way in. And so you see different parts of the nose and different parts of the throat, okay? So I'm going to go back a bit here. Oh, it's not moving. Something wrong with the computer. Can we go? Okay, kind of. Oops, I'm so sorry here. Okay, not really my fault here. <laughs> Let's see whether we can... Uh, first, uh, oh, Joel is here helping me out. Okay, you're not moving. Okay, okay, am I in trouble now? Oh, nope, nope, that's not right. So bear with me. Even the computer is taking a nap now. Ah, no, no, I don't want to show you this yet. 
Oh, it's not working. It's not working. No, can we go back? Can we go back? Can we go back? No, can no. We are not. We are not working. Can we go back? All right. So, uh, we're supposed to. No, no. We're not. It's not working. All right. Ah. Uh, let's see what's going on here. So, uh, okay. Album. Ah, here. Okay. All right. We start from the beginning again. Okay. My apologies, sir. Uh. All right, I'm here just now. Okay. Yes, the most common ENT problem. So just now I uh, basically uh, gave you an idea of what I do as an ENT doctor or an ENT consultant. And I'm gonna zoom in straight to the most common ENT problems. Okay, so another question is patient will ask, are you a surgeon or are you a physician? So I'm glad to say that we are uh, uh, a bit of a hybrid, all right? So we do surgeries, we also treat patients with uh, medication, okay? So I'm going to divide a bit of, uh, of uh, my topic of uh, sharing today, the common ENT problems in adult. And then we have also common ENT problems in children. They basically overlap, so I'm just going to go through. This is by no means an exhaustive list. All right, so uh, of course, we we'll start off with uh, nasal and sinus disorder. I'm going to throw in a few pictures because I believe that a picture paints a thousand words. And uh, I'm just looking at me, yep, 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 it's not really a good thing at three o'clock in the afternoon. All right, so I'm going to just talk a bit of what we do for patients with nose problems. And obviously, sinusitis is a major part of my practice. Different sort of sinusitis, different sort of, uh, you hear a term called nasal polyp. So it's something that uh, we ENT surgeons uh, deal with on a daily basis. And of course, we talk about the ears and different sort of infection, tumors, all right? And then ears can lead to hearing disorder. You know, you have adult hearing disorder, children comes in with hearing disorder. Very popular uh, problem is also, I would say popular, of course, uh, is, uh, vertigo or different sort of dizziness yeah and we also see uh, neck disease uh, many a times different different swellings on the neck and thyroid uh, this is when a lot of patients don't know that we do thyroid surgery they say oh, oh i didn't know you do thyroid surgery oh okay so these are things that we do as an ent surgeon uh, here and neck cancer obviously with different swellings they can also turn out unfortunately to be cancerous um, something that uh, we have to bear in mind, yeah. Especially this part of the world, okay. I cannot stress too much on the fact that uh, there is an entity called nasopharyngeal carcinoma. All right, it's basically nose cancer. So the most uh, famous uh, personality um, in recent times is, of course, our dear Dr. Lee Chong Wei, yeah, our badminton uh, champion. So you. Uh, I have to highlight here, even doing this MCO, uh, the last couple of months, when we have a reduction in the number of patients, we still have we still diagnose, you know, on a regular basis, new cases of NPC. It's just a, at a frightening rate and, and it's just a, amazing uh, in a bad way. Yeah? How many uh, NPC, uh, short form for nasopharyngeal carcinoma, that we pick up even on a weekly basis, I would say. Um, and then, of course, uh, patients with trauma coming with any neck wounds, okay, uh, accident cases, foreign body also very common, uh, more common than you would, uh, you you would think, okay, in a child and also in an adult, with fish bones stuck, even we have dentures stuck in the throat, you know things like that, and uh, I would say uh, fairly uh, relatively new. Uh, uh, Frontier of ENT is uh, sleep apnea, all right, with uh, sleep disorder. So, uh, sleep disorder actually has been around for many, many uh, moons now, many, many years. But uh, I guess uh, the last uh, 15 or 15 years or so, we've been talking more and more on the impact and the complications uh, on health uh, if you do have sleep apnea, all right. So I'm rushing it through because I just want to, sh oh, it's stuck again. Okay, yeah, so I mentioned earlier, one of the things that we do, okay, different sort of scopes that go through the nose, go through the ears, and go through the um, mouth, yeah? All right, the oral cavity. 
Okay, next uh, is not moving. It's not moving again. Okay, it's not moving. Oh, too fast. Okay. All right, never mind. We just go on to nasal polyp. I wanted to show, yeah, sinusitis. All right, so very important, okay? Not every patient that walks through my door will have sinusitis, okay? And uh, dog, becoming dog, I have a sinus problem. I have a sinus. Actually, sinus is not a disorder. Sinus is an anatomical structure in our body. Okay, I, I gave, uh, basically this, I prepared my by. Uh, by uh, Joel, our marketing team. Uh, nice pictures, but I wanted to show my own pictures. But anyway, I guess you can see here from the diagram, these are all our sinuses, okay? Our maxillar, and then we have our frontal, okay? And then ethmoids, things like that. So sinuses should be clear, right? So they should have, you should have air inside of sinuses. You should drain properly. Unfortunately, as you know, I will say with our environment and all that, uh, not getting any better, of course, uh, you have problems with blockage of the sinuses. So it leads to sinusitis, okay? So sinusitis is basically inflammation of the sinus. All right, so you don't have a sinus problem, you have a sinusitis. So to make things more complex, okay, or intriguing, you have sinusitis due to certain triggers. You can also be tumors causing sinusitis. You can have nasal polyp, very common nowadays. Okay, I wouldn't say nowadays, it's been around for ages too. So I, hopefully I can show you. Yeah, so if you look inside your nose, you have things like this. Okay, this is called, this is uh, not the sinus. Uh, sorry, this is not a polyp. This is called a turbinate, all right? So I just want to show you a patient with sinusitis can easily be mistaken by just having a chronic cough. Very commonly, uh, we work together with the uh, respiratory uh, physician, the lung doctors, and you'll be surprised at the number of cases that is not due to the lung. You know, it's so sent to us, and you see post nasal drip, all right, running down the back of your throat, down to the back of this is called the nasal pharynx. Yeah? Okay, very important here that I want to show you, uh, and then it just runs down. Whereas on the right hand side over here, yeah, you see all these straight structures. So I often tell my patient, it's as though you peel grapes, you know, you peel the skin, no matter, it can be green, can be uh, red, all right, crimson, you peel the grapes, it looks exactly like it, okay, all right. So these are grape-like structures inside your nose, it can be quite bad, it can obstruct the entire cavity, all right, it can cause a lot of infection, it can cause a lot of problems with your smell, your and then uh, we need to address it, okay? So this is nasal polyp and sinusitis. Okay, it's also not moving. Yeah, it's very commonly also, like I mentioned, ear infections. So ear infections, uh, commonly we see tonsillitis. But many a times, again, dog, I have, ton my, I have tonsil uh, problem again. So you have to really look inside the oral cavity. Many a times it's not, Tonsillitis can be due to a lot of other factors called pharyngitis due to reflux, and due to just infection. You can have a lot of aptus ulcers, many sort of sore throat. And complications can arise from having a simple tonsillitis. So things that are uh, simple may not seem so simple. Okay? So very important to see exudates, okay, or white dots, okay, on both sides of the tonsils. Alright? So um, I'm going to go on. Oh, also, as like I say, things can get complicated. You also sometimes get problem with tonsillar cancer. Uh, this is supposed to be a video. I don't think we can play here. But uh, I just want to show you that many a times, of course, it's a simple uh, benign tonsillitis infection of the tonsil. But now and then, every few months, we get one case where patients and unfortunately turn out to be diagnosed with uh, tonsillar cancer. And one of the telltale signs is that usually, the tonsils are enlarged only on one side, not both sides. Okay, that's one very, very key factor. Then you always have to look at, hey, you know, I always tell my patients, if things are symmetrical, that means both sides are equally big, like large hands, so you're not too afraid. But one side, if it gets abnormally big for whatever reason, unilateral problems, you always uh, get a second opinion, get a professional opinion. Okay, so Tonsillar cancer, we see now and then, not as common as uh, MPC, 
nasopharyngeal carcinoma, but uh, common enough to elude. Uh, so uh, eluders, uh, so very, very all right, low threshold uh, to, to diagnose and also high index of suspicion. All right. Okay. Oh, uh, it's not moving again. It's not moving again. Okay, bear with me. Okay, this one is not my fault. Eh? Okay, so there yeah, is throat problem. All right, so hoarseness of voice. Okay, I, I just uh, uh, was dealing with a patient with hoarseness of voice. Okay, a singer. All right, so a fairly uh, uh, innocuous sort of uh, a patient that I saw earlier, but it turned out there is a nodule there that could be suspicious. All right, so a smoker, things like that. So be aware we also deal with patients with hoarseness of voice. It can be yeah, here I think uh, you can see the vocal cords over here, a very nice V, glistening white color, all right? And you can see here, okay? All right, you can have some sort of irregular uh, swelling over here, all right? A little bit uh, erythematous, okay? Inflamed looking, all right? On the left side of the cord. So larynx is over here, okay? It's below the tongue, obviously. All right, it's over here before you go to the neck. So... Uh, of course, um, laryngeal cancer always, uh, you know, higher risk in patients with uh, um, uh, smokers. Okay, smokers, and you'll be surprised. Uh, we, I don't know. You know, I remember a couple of ladies who was diagnosed with laryngeal cancer, and they don't smoke. Okay, no obvious environmental uh, risk factors, but passive smoking. I, I, you know, husband smokes like a chimney. You know, all right. Two, three packs a day for years you know and they unfortunately passive smokers i believe there is also a role uh, in the laryngeal ca all right okay let's uh, move on hopefully it works yes all right mpc right nasopharyngeal carcinoma all right so again uh, you can have a look on the side profile here all right so you can put the scope right through the nose the orifice of the nostril all the way in and then usually at the back, all right, nasopharyngeal tumors, okay, or the nasopharynx at the back here. Yeah. So you see on the right hand side over here, okay, it's supposed to be empty, patent, clear. That's the eustachian tube, okay. So I'm going to tell you a bit later on children with problems with the ears, where cough and cold, even cough and cold can lead to problems of the ears, yeah, through the eustachian tube, the opening from the nose or the nasal passage to the uh, middle ear, right, to the ears, and you see here the big large bulb. But you'll also be surprised. I tell, I tell you, most of the time, uh, we see a lots, lots of patients with MPC. This is you're lucky your patient come with this. So sometimes you have patient can be mistaken by just having sinusitis, you know, and small little blood state. They don't bleed. They don't have many problems. Small little telltale signs. So I have to say here, okay, look out for telltale signs such as. Minimal blood stain for months without any complaints. You can still go to work, acti activities of daily living is still uh, you carry on as usual. They may have one sided ear blockage and then they have very innocuous, so it seems, um, limb node. All right, very, very common. Okay, uh, they can just present with this and then most of the time they present with very subtle signs and then uh, uh, because limb nodes sometimes, uh, you know. Uh, you have other doctors who see patients with nodes and uh, those benign, painless, okay, if it's not painful, okay, we have to be afraid. If it's a painful, limb node, I'm not too afraid, okay? So these are telltale signs of a patient with early MPC. But many a times we see patients stage 3, stage 3 uh, or 4 when they come in. Uh, I have one in the ward now, okay, with diplopia, that means they have blurring of vision when they come in, you know? They've seen other doctors and then nothing, nothing, eye problem, and then da 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 da, and then turn out to be MPC. So I cannot stress enough. All right. If you take one, one, one lesson from this, is remember we are a country before of MPCs. Uh, okay. This part of the world. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So salivary glands. Yeah. It's also part of our uh, domain of treatment. This is called a parotid. We have a couple here. Okay. Parotid. We have the submandibular gland here. And then we have the sublingual here, all right? No, sublingual. This is a bit too big. This is also from, I, I didn't put up with this, okay? But anyway, um, so how do they present? Obviously, with different sort of swelling. Oh, okay. Uh, I think my life, uh, my own patients are not allowed to be shown here. 
So uh, you see swellings over here, different parts of the, you can also from oral cavity, different parts of the, uh, of the uh, salivary glands. Okay? Those are major salivary glands. You can also have small minor salivary glands. So I'm getting a bit detailed here. All right, so oral problems, all, all very commonly, of course, the most common in coming with, with uh, bad breath, halitosis, okay? And they complain of bad breath. So we have to look out for a few uh, telltale signs of me. Of course, the most, or the most extreme cases, you have cancer, things like that. You have ulcers very commonly, lumps and bumps, and patches inside the oral cavity, inside the, uh, on the tongue, okay? So uh, they always say that, uh, you know, the eyes is it mirror to the soul but sometimes you know the tongue is also can give you a bit of uh, uh, indication of our health right hearing disorder very common okay uh, extreme uh, used to be i would say extreme uh, group of, uh, of patients from very young to very old okay for two obvious reasons eh? one is more of a uh, breast bicusis right eh? uh, age related hearing loss in the elderly and also uh, the very young and usually the young will have problems with uh, sinus problem they have a uh, cough and cold they have allergy problems lead to hearing loss a conductive hearing loss okay uh, glue here i came out from the ot just now so i, I had to do a patient's uh, a child okay with uh, problems with the ears eh? and, and suck out the the mucus called the glue ear yeah so uh, we do hearing aid trial here. We uh, do cochlear implant. You know, things I'll throw out these names to you. Okay, so giddiness of otigo, yes. Okay, so they always say when you see a patient comes in to us, uh, a giddy patient, many a time it makes us also very giddy. Okay, because you have to really have a protocol, you know, to rule out every single uh, uh, different uh, systems that are involved. Uh, when, when, when you talk about uh, vertigo, giddiness, dizziness, okay, are we dealing with the brain? Are we dealing with the eyes? Are we dealing with the ears? Are we dealing with the neck? Are we dealing with the general body health? Are we, uh, uh, we dealing with the cardiac problem, uh, arrhythmia kind of problem, okay? Electrolytes problem, so many, many things, okay? So, um, one um, area that we have to rule out. Uh, if you have persistent uh, violent type of vertigo, is of, of course see the ENT. Yeah? All right, like I mentioned earlier, different sort of uh, neck swellings. Very commonly, I think uh, uh, this is my slides. Okay, so uh, limb nodes. Okay, again, limb nodes can be so varied. You know, in terms of presenting, uh, in terms of the origin of the problem. We uh, have. Uh, we have a lot of Indonesian friends who come in as patients okay, here in Island Hospital. And a lot of times uh, you have infection, lymph nodes, uh, tuberculosis, extra pulmonary, that means they uh, present not in the lungs, okay, they present elsewhere, and a lot of times in the uh, lymph nodes. Uh, and lymph nodes can be on the neck, and you'll be surprised. We have so called lymph nodes, yeah? all right, uh, the lymphatic ring, we call it inside the um, oral cavity, inside the nose, and things like that. So lymph nodes very common swelling that we roll out. It can be as simple as just reactive lymph nodes after you have cough and cold in a child to of course cancer. All right. And thyroid, okay, very commonly in the ladies, but nowadays you also I mean you also have in in, in, in men. All right. Okay. So different sort of thyroid. So I tell my patients, okay, who should I see, doctor? I say, well, you have surgical uh, thyroid problem can be divided with surgical problem or a medical problem. So many a time, simple uh, medica medical thyroid uh, disorder, that means you take medication, uh, we can also prescribe. But sometimes, uh, again, you know, you have different extreme of patients with different, more difficult level of uh, medical thyroid. So usually you send to the endocrine neurologist, okay? Uh, surgical thyroid, obviously us, and also the general surgeons also do lots of uh, thyroid, uh, thyroidectomy, okay? For cancer, benign cases and things like that. Thyroglossosis, okay, is uh, very common in children, but you can also present late in the adulthood. The, all these are not so common over here. Salivary gland, again, very common. Also, put, uh, here I put there how we divide them. To give you an uh, index of suspicion is to divide them midline or lateral, okay? Uh, swelling, so 
that's how we uh, go about uh, make sure we don't you know miss anything at all uh, again uh, i want to say here that limb, limb nodes can also present with lymphoma again this is uh, not my patient i think uh, it's in the internet so i guess uh, uh, it's all it's all for for everyone to see so simple limb nodes okay can also present with uh, non-hodgkin lymphoma i put here because recently just a couple of days ago i had one patient with non-hodgkin lymphoma uh, multilar, nodular, goiter, very common, okay, extremely common. Okay. Ah, so sleep disorder, this is another ball, ball game. We can be here talking hours and hours. Uh, you know, we go for nowadays, we go for ENT seminar, you know, international uh, ENT conference just on sleep apnea, you know, just on sleeping disorder, okay. And it can be three, four days, you know, and then you have workshop, you have different, different procedures that you do. So, uh, Sleeping disorder, okay, can be simple snoring, okay, upper airway resistance, all right, and uh, all the way to obstructive sleep apnea. So things that we do, we do things like if you have heard of sleep study, you know, we use a machine called a CPAP, an auto pad, all right. So throw in a few names for you, and uh, uh, these are certain things that we do. Okay, so um, I think what's next? Uh, Okay, it's not moving again. Oh, yes, common allergy ENT problem in children now. I would say uh, there are many overlap, of course, different parts of the nose, different parts of the ears, and different parts of the throat inside and outside. Okay, again, inside you look into the vocal cords, all right, and then you look into you know, different parts of the oral cavity, and then outside you have thyroid problem, you have the uh, lymph nodes. Okay, and other, okay, nerve problem, things like that, schwannoma, okay, I throw in this name to you. Uh, also, I uh, just had one case recently. All right, so uh, I would say here that uh, if I have to put number one, is a lot of patients. I, I do see quite a number of, uh, uh, quite a substantial uh, group of uh, children, fortunately. Uh, I don't, uh, I have uh, only one child, okay, uh, one daughter, but... Uh, I, I like children, but uh, maybe not too many, I guess. So anyway, uh, but I like them as patients, okay? So uh, so when they come and see me, a lot of times, uh, allergy, all right? Allergy uh, problems. Of course, sore throat, different sort of URTI. URTI stands for upper respiratory tract infection. Nosebleed, so common, okay? All right, uh, eardrum problems, okay? Like I mentioned, glue ear. So uh, foreign body, okay? Uh, I'm just gonna throw in a few pictures again here. Yes, uh, again, not my picture from the internet, I, I believe so. So you can see, uh, I actually gave a, another picture which illustrate a, a child running away, taking ice cream, okay, and all this rash all over. So basically, uh, the triad, okay, of uh, allergy disease, basically, you have skin problem, eczema, you have uh, nasal problem, allergy rhinitis, and then you have a lung problem, asthma, okay? So the if your uh, medical prof, uh, uh, personnel here will hear of the ARIA guidelines, okay? Allergy rhinitis and its impact on asthma, okay? They have these guidelines. So it's a multi-pronged uh, approach. We need to uh, not deal just with the nose. Uh, I also treat asthma, you know, simple cases of asthma, obviously, uh, and also, uh, uh, eczema, okay. So, uh, anatomy of the ear, I think here I just want to show you that ear is not as simple as you think, uh, as I think, you know, it takes me years and years, you know, to understand the whole, still, you know, um, you have the outer ear, okay, the middle ear here, sorry, see, okay, this is the outer ear, okay, okay, the middle ear is here, and then the inner ear, all right, so in children, you can have an inner ear problem, where they need cochlear implant, they have problem with the nerve, all right, or a middle ear usually, okay, where you have, remember I use the word glue ear, glue as in glue, G-L-U-E, okay, so you have all this gluey stuff stuck here, and this is the eustachian tube that comes, okay, connects the middle ear to the uh, nasal cavity, all right, and you have the outer ear, all right, all the way here, so but this is not my picture, okay? So you have keloid, okay? Common also, okay? Usually ear, uh, due to pierce, piercing of the earring, yeah? okay? 
So from then, uh, you're ready. I think this is my picture here. Okay, they allow me to put this. So this is a normal eardrum here. Okay, and you have obviously impacted earwax. Many other different. Uh, automycosis, okay, fancy name again, but uh, it's just basic sense of fungus. You have fungal infection of the ear. Okay, uh, not too uncommon, unfortunately. Okay, fairly common actually. Then you have very bad kind of earwax problem that has a disease, it's a disease entity by itself, it's called keratosis obturans. Not that common, but oh, it can be very painful, extremely uh, unpleasant, all right? So, so outer ear problem, okay? Ah, foreign body, oh, so common. So no digging, okay? No digging with your cotton bud. You'll be surprised how many cotton buds I take out on a weekly basis, sometimes daily basis, oh dear. All right, okay, so, Oh, oh, I wish you can see this. Okay, I'm supposed to play it here. Okay, I don't think you can play it. So this is, what, what, what is this? Okay, I can't hear you, but uh, let me just tell you, it's actually a cockroach, okay? A small little cockroach. I'm not joking, okay? All right, I have the proof. I can call the patient anytime, and then he or she will, she will, she will, she will, uh, you know, she will vouch for it, okay? This is a clock in the morning, I remember. Okay, is there something is that? Is it, oh, it's a cockroach. I said, huh, are you sure it's a cockroach? It can't be a cockroach. Cockroach is so big. I have to eat my words, okay? Do not eat the cockroach, okay? Because I have to remove it. It's actually a cockroach, okay? I'm kind of scared of cockroach, so I have to like, you know, bring myself up and then I remove it. Oh my goodness, it's still alive, you know, kicking. Can you imagine that? Luckily, uh, no injury to the eardrum. Oh, okay. So I want to show you here, uh, I think mites, uh, they call it, very, very, very common also, in, uh, usually in children. Okay, I can't show you here, obviously. Okay, let me move on. Yeah, this is a different eardrum. I think I showed you a bit. A normal eardrum should be very clear, transparent. Okay, this is the left side of the eardrum. And then you can see different, different appearances of eardrum. Okay, so different appearance will give us different stages of the disease of the eardrum. Huh? Sometimes you have to put a tube. Okay, like this morning. Okay, uh, one child had to put a tube. And then uh, you have different, different uh, problems with the eardrum. Okay, so this is a normal eardrum. This can be obviously can be painful. Usually in this part is not painful. Okay, they just mothers are the best. Okay, they will tell. Okay, I think my, my child is not listening that well, not doing too well in school for some reason. Okay, it turns out that they are not hearing that well. Okay, so pediatric uh, autological disorder, auto means the ear. Okay, ear problems and cochlear implant. All right. Okay, so we put in. Uh, uh, this is a cochlear. It looks like a somewhat like a hearing aid. As you know, when technology improves, it gets smaller and smaller and nicer, okay? And then you basically insert all the way into the cochlea over here, all right? So now you do cochlear implant, and then uh, you also now go and do brainstem implant, all right? You, do, uh, you don't put here, you put right in the brainstem, okay? All right, part of the brain, okay? Oh, I'm supposed to have questions here. So uh, should I proceed, yeah? Okay, I'm supposed to proceed. Uh, I think they have... They've come up with all these questions, uh, you know, uh, from patients and also to the marketing team. Uh, my child has been coughing for two weeks and I was, was told, yeah, like I mentioned, okay, I did mention earlier that uh, many a times it can be a sinus problem, okay, sinusitis, all right, uh, or uh, allergic problem with the adenoid, uh, I didn't talk about adenoids, okay, adenoid problem, things like that. Alright, so it's good if the lungs are clear and keep on coughing, an allergy component that could, uh, you uh, should pay a, at least a, a visit to the ENT doctor, yeah? When should I take my child here? So, again, the, of course, obviously ENT problems, if you have problems with the nose, ears, and also throat, limb nodes, you know, uh, a child, hearing problems, very common, and also bleeding from the nose, like I mentioned. Uh, the list was uh, not exhaustive earlier, but uh, you get uh, my drift here. Yeah. What is chronic uh, sinusitis and how is it treated? Yes, so sinusitis, we divide them acute, subacute, and uh, chronic. And uh, chronic sinusitis is uh, the hallmark of chronic sinusitis is basically a lot of post nasal drip. They tend to cough. And like the first question earlier, when they cough and lungs are clear, uh, you have to look up there. So I tell my patients, you know, basically sinus problem, 
uh, I'm like a plumber, okay? So I basically open up because things get blocked inside the sinuses for one reason or another. So my job is try to release, uh, uh, to take away the obstruction, you know? I'm just a plumber basically for the nose. So it, of course we try medication, but sometimes, you know, a small proportion of patients still need surgery, especially the talk about polyp, you talk about fungal sinusitis, okay? And, and, and of that sort, yeah. All right, when would I need to talk to my ENT? Oh, so tonsils, they are very, okay, some, uh, uh, we cannot be trigger happy when we uh, talk about removing tonsils. Huh? There are clear, clear indications uh, for removing the tonsils. Huh? Of course, one of it is recurrent infections, okay, uh, per year. Real tonsillitis, not just pharyngitis, okay. Okay, certain criteria four to five times per year, how many blah blah, how many times uh, for consecutive years, very strict criteria. All right, okay, nothing goes wrong when you follow criteria. Okay, second uh, reason is very bad obstructive symptoms. We have patients uh, who have uh, obvious children, especially keep on getting fish bone stuck, you know, in their, in their throat. So, something that you don't want to, it's a un very unpleasant, uh, very unpleasant. Some of my friends and many of my patients even know that I always tell them that my daughter does not take fish until she is about four because I've seen enough nightmares, you know, uh, of fish bones stuck inside the throat, okay, for a child and it's, um, it's really, you, you feel for them, you feel for the parents, okay, so obstructive symptoms, sleep apnea, things like that, you know, and then the thirdly, peritonsillar abscess, okay, I'm telling you other things now. So you need to see the doctors and not, basically, in a nutshell, not all tonsils, you know, should be removed, okay? Many a time, they don't need to be removed, okay? Cotton buds, uh, my enemy, okay? Our enemy is always the cotton buds. So obviously, a no, lah, huh? okay? Uh, here, a cotton buds, okay to clean, uh, basically not for children and adults, please. Can I see? Oh, of course, please, please. Like I say, in this part of the world, Again, I'm going to come back to MPC, yeah? nasal pharyngeal carcinoma. Oh dear, so sometimes very subtle signs. Yeah? Okay, a bit of ear blockage, a bit of tinnitus, ringing sound in the ears, which is also quite common. And then you have small little painless swelling on your neck, small uh, problems with breathing, and then epistaxis. Means small, no, they don't, they don't come with a full-blow torrential bleeding. They come with just minimal blood stain, spontaneous persistent uh, discharge huh? uh, blood stain discharge nasal or throat or sputum so you it's, it's good to just pop by and just get a screening done especially you have a family family history okay and the hearing problems you never know many of the time we think that we hear well until it's a bit too late all right so it's like the eyes get the eyes check get your hearing uh, uh, your hearing uh, level or thresholds, uh, baseline thresholds check, yeah. Okay, start again. No, okay. Oh, trim me, no lah, trim me. Okay. Uh, so, so I won't say so, but I have to say here, plucking of no, you know, plucking of uh, nostril hair can lead to problems and quite severe problems, okay. I just want to tell you here, this is a triangle of the face. Uh, we call it the danger triangle of the face, okay? No getting out, you know, pinching for pimples, taking out your, your nasal hair, uh, nasal hair uh, is absolutely a no-no. Why? Because this part of the uh, area, the triangle, okay, of this area, okay, the blood vessel actually lead all the way to the brain, all right? Uh, so you can have a direct spread from a um, uh, simple infection. Uh, to the brain, something called cavernous sinus thrombosis. I'm not joking. How many have I seen? Not common, fortunately, but uh, every once a year or every, once every one and a half years, you know, we have patients with very bad uh, vestibulitis, then they lead to cavernous sinus you know, thrombosis. You see, you don't want to be having this problem. I've been told that, okay, uh, I've been told I flew it in my in the ear, okay, so basically, this is always they say, uh, in, in, in Chinese, they always say the ear balance, uh, fluid balance in the ear, all right, so in our terms, it's uh, basically called uh, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, okay, as you do with uh, spinning, when triggered by different uh, 
uh, hate movement yeah so there are certain uh, maneuvers or so-called uh, exercise that we do to help patients to be relieved it's, it's not cancer for uh, it's not cancerous for sure it doesn't lead to anything uh, sinister but it can be quite debilitating yeah if you know what i mean i have constant yeah now we talk about tinnitus you know tinnitus can also be associated with hearing loss all right Yes, uh, yeah, my child is complains of ear pain. Oh, definitely, as I told you, always remember we have to make sure is that is it an outer ear problem, a middle ear problem? Usually these two. All right, inner ear, not really, they don't really complain of ear pain. All right, or is it really an ear pain? It can be a referred pain, okay? Always think that it could be from somewhere else or constantly causing the pain in the, the ears, which is very common, okay? So you should uh, get the ENT uh, assessment uh, if uh, persistent complaint of ear pain all right you don't want the eardrum to rupture and then the pain goes away then you think it's all right so you have a discharge that uh, with a perforated eardrum also not uncommon all right so headache uh, headache is also cause headache to us because you have different sort of headaches many many so our job is to make sure whether it's a sinus or non-sinus what we call rhinogenic headache or non-rhinogenic is it due to uh, uh, nasal ENT problem or non uh, ENT problem. So migraine is also very common. They see us, they see the neurologist. Okay, usually one-sided, okay, as the picture here, okay, uh, not my picture here. And then they also have a uh, throbbing, the, the description is throbbing type of pain, one-sided, all right, okay, and then usually they rest and then goes away. Sinus pain is more of a dull, pressing, you know, and then it can be quite continuously, a lot of nasal symptoms, may also be not, okay. So, so many other sort of other headaches that you have to rule out okay not just these two yeah of course these two are the main culprits usually all right next uh yeah vertigo is different from being dizzy but we have to always okay if investigate patient like i told you earlier we have to have an elaborate uh, protocol to go step by step we do not want to miss anything sinister all right from a patient with dizzy that can be categorized with vertigo. Vertigo basically illusion of spinning sensation, all right? Of the surrounding or yourself, all right? So there's a definition of vertigo, all right? So uh, is there, of course, uh, I mentioned uh, earlier that we talked about positional vertigo, okay? All right, quite common. And then certain maneuvers that we can do and then certain triggers so the medication may help for certain sort of vertigo okay not all all right so uh definitely you need to seek the uh, opinion of a professional uh, if you have persistent vertigo well even one episode of vertigo it can be quite uh, you know quite awful uh, and it's good to you, you i can i can tell you patients will never forget when they have a bad episode of vertigo all right the snor again, yes, of course, snoring can be just simple snoring, but it can also lead to a health problem called uh, sleep apnea. Okay, obstructive sleep apnea. Okay, you have other sort of sleep apnea, central sleep apnea. So, um, nitpicking here, but uh, we need to, uh, something that we see on a regular basis, patients with snoring. Okay, uh, I might make this. So, I guess, uh, it is, uh, I guess I'm the, at the end of, my sharing is it half an hour now yeah i guess so so uh thank you very much is that right thank you very much uh for those of you are tuning in and uh i'm happy to take well, i think my if there are questions okay thank you so much okay have a good day everyone stay safe all right okay bye